If you like these videos and you want to see them a day before they go up on YouTube, head over to Library. It's an awesome decentralized alternative to YouTube and I absolutely love it. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite Librem 5 fanboy, Gardner. Uh, I've got the Librem 5 here in my hands and uh, this is the Librem 5 Dogwood. This is an awesome device. Let's talk about it. This is the official Librem 5 Dogwood review. So I've had the Librem 5 Dogwood for about two weeks and I've been using it, uh, trying it out. Uh, it's pretty cool. I love this device uh, and it becomes more and more useful with every iteration that they send to me. Um, this is the third Librem 5 device that I have uh, played around with. Actually, it's the fourth. Uh, I, I got an early sneak preview of the uh, Alpine or whatever the first one was. And then I got a Birch and a Chestnut. They are all great, but this one is the definitive version so far. On my phone, I run uh, Page Plus, which is a mobile virtual network operator that's uh, working on the Verizon network. And Page Plus is kind of weird. Up until this device, I, I hadn't been able to get LTE working at all on uh, the uh, Librem 5 using the uh, SIM card from my daily driver. Uh, but I did actually get a Ting SIM card and I was able to use LTE over Ting's network. So I took the SIM out of my uh, Android phone, I put it in the Librem 5 and it didn't work out of the box. I had to screw around with some APN settings. Um, I ended up getting LTE working, but I couldn't make calls. So I changed the settings again and I could send text messages, but I couldn't use data. Suffice it to say, I think something's wrong with my MVNO rather than the phone itself because I had no problems with anything with the Ting SIM card. Um, I don't have the Ting SIM card anymore. I don't I lost it. I don't know where it is, so I can't try it now. But um, suffice it to say that LTE is finicky for me with this device with my current SIM card. Wi-Fi is as great as ever, though, and being able to use Wi-Fi is kind of a must uh, and it works great. Wi-Fi is awesome. Uh, I do have a, a minor issue where sometimes if I restart the device, it won't automatically reconnect to Wi-Fi. Just flipping the switch on and off to turn off the Wi-Fi and turn it back on. That seems to, uh, that seems to work pretty well to clear up that problem. Bluetooth is working fantastically at this point. You can connect Bluetooth headphones, which I have done. I've also connected my Logitech Craft keyboard and my uh, MX Master mouse. They both work great, um, as one would expect. A big improvement over the hardware versions this time around is charging. Charging was kind of a pain in the butt the last time uh, I got a Librem device. Um, the the U one of the USB charging lanes was was shorted out in the in the device itself, so I had to actually uh, charge with a USB Type A cable rather than a uh, Type C cable. Um, that was annoying, uh, but that's fixed here. There's no issues with this device um, with charging at all. Speaking of charging, this device actually comes with a 3600 milliamp hour battery. That's what they're listing as the final spec. And, uh, the other ones were shipping with like a 2000 milliamp hour battery. Um, this one is the final deal. This is the final, uh, product here. And with batteries comes battery life. They have actually, uh, improved much of the software to, uh, to be more, uh, energy efficient on the, on the Librem 5. Purism has been constantly refining, uh, Fosh and the kernel for this device and it works pretty well depending on your usage I've with screen on time I got about four and a half or five hours worth of charge uh, from this last time that I used the device but I suspect this will be up around six hours of screen on time by the time Evergreen launches with the with the Birch device I think I was getting like two hours of screen on time if that uh, it was kind of not great um, but this is a significant improvement and I can't wait to see where they go in, when, in terms of battery life with this thing. Uh, the Dogwood device actually runs noticeably cooler than previous hardware iterations that I've tried. This is due to the fact that they moved the CPU from the back of the PCB to the front and it lets this, the, uh, the screen actually dissipate some of the heat that the CPU generates. That's really cool. It's a really smart engineering move that they made. Uh, one of the things that I noticed right off the bat was that haptics had actually been enabled on this device. I don't know if it was this device or if it was uh, a, a software revision, but um, when you type on the keyboard, haptics are enabled. The, uh, the hardware volume buttons actually work as you would expect them to. And when you plug in headphones into the headphone jack, uh, it actually transfers the audio settings or it changes the audio settings to output audio to the headphones. The headphone jack itself is now 
uh, flush with the body of the, of the device rather than kind of poking out as it was in previous iterations. The smart card reader has been moved from the side of the device into the back uh, of the device. You actually have to remove the battery to remove the smart card. Uh, I kind of wish that they would do this with SD cards and SIM cards. Uh, I think it's weird to have a SIM tray on a, on a phone that has a removable back. And I've had issues with the uh, the SIM tray, at least on this version. Previous versions, I didn't have problems with it, but when I opened it the second time to remove my SIM card, it just didn't want to come out. So I had to take the back off, remove the, uh, the, the covers for the uh, M2 slots, and then kind of finagle the switch that's inside the SIM tray uh, in order to get the SIM tray to eject. It was very strange. Now let's talk about the software because the software here is pretty great. Uh, I've had four software updates for this device since it released. They are constantly pushing updates for uh, the Librem 5. GNOME Web has had some serious improvements since the last time uh, that I used it on a Librem 5 device. Um, however, it's not quite there yet. It has some uh, real limitations that uh, make it not optimal for a web browser. The biggest problem is that it's slow. It kind of chugs. The viewport is not GPU accelerated right now. And that means that uh, it really chugs as you're scrolling through a web page, especially a heavy web page. But the heavens opened and Firefox is now available on the Librem 5. That's fantastic. That is like one of the coolest things about the, the this device. Firefox provides a much better, much improved browsing experience than uh, GNOME Web does. Still not GPU accelerated. You can do a couple uh, little hacks to get it working, but at least uh, from a cursory glance, it doesn't need GPU acceleration, uh, but it will be nice to have it eventually. The problem with Firefox though is that most of Firefox's built-in pages are actually not meant for mobile. Uh, they were designed with desktop in mind, and this is the full desktop experience of Firefox. That means that if you go to a website and the website uses like user agent checking in order to, to decide if it wants to show you the uh, mobile version or not, well, that can cause a little bit of confusion and the web browser will half render the page as uh, mobile and half render it as a desktop and it just doesn't look right. Um, there are some workarounds for this. You can install a user agent switcher. Um, you can do a couple other things, but uh, it's not quite optimal yet. But you can watch YouTube videos through Firefox and it works fantastically. Having a full-fledged web browser on the Librem 5 makes a world of difference. I, I mean, it's to the point where uh, it feels 200% more useful to me to have Firefox on Librem 5. It's no secret that I live most of my life in a web browser. Uh, <laughs> I love web browsers. I'm kind of a geek, especially about Firefox. So having it here is really, really nice. Fosh now features screenshots of the open applications uh, in the task switcher. This is cool, but it could also be a privacy problem. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a way to disable that if you're installing like a, a package. Uh, I, I don't know, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, however, I'm cr also curious why they didn't just use like the expose mode or the open applications mode uh, that comes built in with GNOME. Uh, maybe it's for uh, <laughs> battery purposes, I don't know. Because these are static screenshots. They, they are screenshots of what you last viewed when you switched out of the app. I don't know how I feel about that, but it's fine, I guess. Notifications are now a thing that exists beyond the initial pop-up. That was one of the things that I complained about was that if you had a notification pop-up on your Librem 5, uh, if you didn't click on it right away, it disappeared and there was no way to see the notification again. Uh, now notifications work similar to the, how they do in Android where you uh, open up the top menu and you'll find notifications in a list there. Um, that works, uh, but that brings me to one of my biggest gripes about the Librem 5 is that the task switching panel and the top panel both work with a toggle. You tap on the top of the screen and it opens the top menu. Uh, there's no like slidey business, you, there's no gestures. I don't know if that's part of their design paradigm. I don't know if that, what that is about, but personally, I just find that that feels lacking in polish. Uh, I'd like to see it more gesture, uh, more responsive to input uh, because I feel like a toggle just 
isn't great. It doesn't feel great. But speaking of a top panel, it now has a lot more functionality. Now you can actually open up uh, the settings by clicking on any of the top three icons, the, the mobile, uh, the mobile network settings, the uh, Wi-Fi settings, the Bluetooth settings. You can now also adjust the volume and the brightness in the uh, top panel. You can toggle screen orientation. You can turn off notifications. It's actually coming together really nice. Uh, I, I, I like the top panel a lot. You can also restart the device from up here, which is cool. And one of my favorite updates to the software is now a, uh, there's an emoji keyboard and there is now a uh, terminal keyboard. Uh, you can type emojis into your terminal. You can use the, the up and down keys. You can use the uh, left and right or control, alt, tab, any of the keys that you would expect to have on a normal keyboard, you now have access to in uh, Squeakboard. That's fantastic. Being able to switch between these uh, different style of keyboard inputs is great. I absolutely love it. Um, I do wish that there was a, an emoji toggle key like on Android, most Android keyboards have an emoji toggle key rather than having to tap on the, the uh, alternate keyboard thing and then selecting it from the list. That's just a minor thing for me. But yeah, and you can also use the uh, up down keys that are in the uh, terminal keyboard to navigate around web pages. I mean, this is a versatile virtual keyboard and I actually really like this, but not everything works yet. There are still a few things that are uh, unimplemented, let's say, uh, first of all, there are no drivers for the cameras. Uh, you can't use the cameras at all right now. I wish that the cameras worked because uh, I would like to be able to take pictures and show you guys what those look like. Unfortunately, can't do that yet. But I've been told that that is on the way. It's like the, one of the next things on their list. They're also still working on uh, video out over USB. Uh, that's something that is like next on their list. And, and I'm quite excited to see what that looks like. Being able to carry this device around, having it be my daily driver, if I have to go into the office to help some people, being able to dock my phone to a monitor and a mouse and keyboard would just be fantastic. Uh, that would be one of the coolest things and just being able to use that and have it configured the way that I want it to be configured. Um, heck yes, please. And the last thing I want to talk about is games because this thing can play 3D games. Uh, I'm actually quite excited about this. Uh, you'll see footage of the games being played. Uh, you can play Doom 3 on here. You can play Super Tux Cart. You can play um, uh, Neverball. All of them are pretty awesome. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone at Purism for sending me this review device. Uh, I want to thank everyone out there for watching this video. What do you think about the Librem 5? I think that it's shaping up to be the coolest phone on the market, personally. Let me know down in the comments. I want to thank Glenn Steen and the 114 other amazing people over on Patreon who make this show uh, what it is today. I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for them, so thank you guys. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the show, you can help support the show over on Patreon. You can help support the show on LibrePay. Uh, there are many ways that you can help the show. Pick up a t-shirt even. Uh, but no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, and have a blessed day.